Our next exercise is using the router. So what you guys are gonna end up making is uh, one board with five different router pieces going on. So let's zoom in and show you what we're looking for. Uh, on one edge of our board, we're gonna do a chamfer. And how does a chamfer work? It's just a little 45 degree angle uh, going between one surface and another. You guys are also gonna use a round over, which is this right here, simply just rounding over the edge. You guys will do a round over with a lip. That'll use the same bit. You guys will use a rabbit and then you guys get to do a dado across the entire face. Using a router is not all that difficult. Once you practice a little bit, it'll go pretty well. The tough part of a router is learning how to change one of the bits. So that's what I really wanna focus on in this video. And of course, we'll give you a demonstration on how to use it and we'll show you some previous students' work so you can see what looks good and what didn't turn out so great. What you see here is just some of our router bits that we've collected over the years. Uh, they come in all different shapes and sizes and grooves and some are meant for some fine woodworking and some are meant uh, for some construction purposes. You guys can purchase these in larger kits. You guys can purchase these in pairs. You guys can purchase router bits as individual bits as well. Um, but if you have a design on some sort of wood project, uh, a router bit probably made that happen. Now we're gonna show you guys how to put a different bit in a router. So according to our exercise page, uh, the first bit that we need to work with is our chamfering bit. Now, as you guys go through, if you wanna go in a different order, uh, it really isn't a big deal. This is a Milwaukee router, and currently it has a dado bit on there. So we wanna take this dado bit off. We wanna put this chamfer bit in. Here's what we're gonna do. We're going to loosen this up, and then we can start sliding this guy off. As you see, it kind of rotates its way. Don't worry about that. We can fix that pretty easy. Okay, and you might find it easiest to remove the entire thing here. It's important that when you guys do change bits that we're not plugged in. Uh, these routers spin over 20,000 uh, RPMs, um, so you don't, wanna, you don't wanna have it plugged in and have an accident, all right? Now, what else? Uh, on this Milwaukee router, and each router can be a little different, we need a wrench to go around here and we need a wrench to go on here as well. We need two wrenches, and we're gonna turn them in opposite directions to make that happen. So, uh, for this one, I got a 7 8 inch wrench. I'm gonna put that on there. And then I have an inch and a quarter wrench, and I'm gonna put this on here. Now, if this one's down here, I won't really have to do anything with it. And then I'm just going to hold the router and pull towards me, and it should loosen itself up. You want to get in the habit of always pulling towards you, because uh, when it, it'll give you a lot of resistance, and then it will release. And what you don't want is to be pushing away, have it release, and then have your hand get close to the bit. Even if it's not spinning, it's still really sharp, and it could, uh, it could cut you. So here's the bit we don't want. We're going to put that there. Here's the bit we do want. Uh, this is a quarter inch shank. They come in quarter inch and half inch. We're gonna put this in. Let me get you a good view here. We're gonna put this in so about three quarters of this sh uh, shank is in there. We don't need it all the way down because then that can kind of interfere uh, with this top piece. And we don't want it so it's just barely in because then it's gonna want to wiggle around and they can even fall out but about three quarters of the way in, and we'll kind of tighten by hand if we can. This one isn't really working well with that, so we'll just put her on down. Now, okay, so right now, if I go to tighten this up, I'm gonna be pushing away from me, and I don't wanna do that. So if I spin it, 
to there. Now I can again just pull towards me. I just need to bring this guy over here. So about three quarters of that shank is in the collet, is what we call it. And when it comes to tightening these up, I'll rotate this a little for you. Uh, we want it snug. We don't need to put every ounce of pressure on this that we have. Uh, we just need it snug. And here's why. We're tightening it up in this direction and our router bit spins in this direction. So in order for this to undo itself, we would, uh, we would need the router bit to, uh, or this nut to spin faster in the opposite direction than the router does. And that's just really tough for that to do. So, uh, so there we have it. Okay, so now we got the bit that we want in there. Now we can put this guy back on. So we're gonna slide this over the top. We're gonna rotate through. There, matter. When it comes to adjusting the depth, what you're gonna to wanna to do is loosen up this wing nut here, and then as you rotate, you'll see that the base of the router is gonna either raise or lower itself down. So keep in mind that it, we don't measure off the very top. We have this bearing here that's gonna run against the edge of the piece you're working with. So what we want is about a quarter inch down from where the cutting surface is to where we want it to be. This is why working on a test piece is pretty valuable to get the correct depth uh, as we work. So we set it. Here I have a scrap piece uh, clamped into place and I'm gonna make a test cut to check the depth. Now, the other thing you guys are gonna want is routers are really loud, so you might wanna grab a pair of earmuffs from our cabinet. When using a router, you're gonna wanna hang on in both hands, and within thumb reach is our on-off button. So we wanna make sure that our router is not in contact with the wood. Uh, we'll start it up, and then we'll feed it into the wood, and head in a counterclockwise direction. Now, as you guys can see, it takes a while for this to come to a complete stop. Um, so you'll just want to kind of hang on to it and, uh, uh, until it gets there. Now you can see that measuring down to our quarter inch, we are right on. Once you have it set to depth and you made a practice piece, now it's time that you can start working on your final project. So we know what we set up is going to be good, so now it's just a matter of clamping it down and giving it a go. Sometimes routers are different from manufacturers. This Makita router uh, only requires one wrench. And what it does have is this little button right here that we can push in to help lock. So what'll happen is I'll push this in and I don't even have to remove this sleeve for this one. But then as I go, you're gonna hear a click here pretty soon, right there. You see, now I've entered a little groove in the mechanism, and then as long as I keep pressure on this, I can go ahead and loosen this guy up. So we loosen our nut up. We're able to get the bit. Now, what I actually do need this bit. This is our roundover bit. And so, as you can see, we have a nice little round over here. And one pass, we're gonna have just the round over, and on our second pass, we're gonna include uh, some lip, is what we call it as well. So, I'm gonna put this back, again, about three quarters of that in there. This one's nice, because I can tighten it by hand for a while. Then I'm gonna push this button in again. Tighten up, make sure it is snug. Not super tight, but pretty snug. 
and then we're in good shape. I can then adjust my depth as needed by rotating this guy up and down. This one's actually just kind of sliding right now and that's okay too. So this ring here is also pretty helpful right there if you need to fine tune it. We have our round over. Now I'll rotate this and we'll get ready for the next one. So now, next up, I need a round over with a lip. So I unplug it and we're ready to adjust this guy. Now, I don't need to adjust the bit on this one. I don't need to adjust the bit. I only need to adjust my depth. So we're here. I'm going to rotate this guy back. Now, with this being set like so, I should get a nice lip on there. All right. Lastly, what we need to make happen is we need to take a rabbiting bit along our last edge here and make it one quarter of an inch deep. Now I got my piece with my four routered edges. I got my chamfer, I have my round over, I got my round over with a lip, and I got my rabbit. All right, so the last thing that you are required to do is to make a dado in the middle of this guy going straight down. So how do we get a perfectly straight line or a perfectly straight dado with a router that's handheld? So here we have our board and we need to do a dado across this guy two inches from the end. So I'm going to mark out two inches and I can make a line across. Now the truth is I don't have to make a line all the way across. I could just do it in one spot and what I will need is for this router bit right here to run right up to that guy. In order to make this happen, we're going to take another piece, we're going to clamp it to our board, and then we're going to have this edge run along this board to make that cut. Let's show you how that works. All right, so here's my piece here. Uh, we have our quarter inch chamfer, our round over, our round over with lip. We have our quarter inch deep rabbit, and we have a quarter inch deep groove or dado that is exactly two inches in from the edge. So if you guys submit something like this, uh, it's gonna be really good.
let's take a look at some previous students' work that might not have been all that great. Uh, right over here, we got a huge depth issue. We didn't pay attention to the depth, so we're much deeper than we need to be. Um, keeping the router flat on the surface as you go and not letting it tip. As you can kind of see right here, it kind of heads in a little bit. Um, otherwise, this one wasn't too bad. This one is a bigger example of that, uh, where the router was going well and then it tipped. So make sure you're getting enough practice in before you go. Uh, depth on this one, otherwise, uh, this one ain't too bad. All right, so this one, uh, as you can see right here, this is where, right along this edge, everything's good, but this is where they were going up against the fence here, but then pulled away from the fence, and then you get that. So that's something we really want to try to avoid as you're going. Uh, this one, that one ain't too bad. This one, uh, fence probably wasn't clamped down well at all and uh, just kind of got out of hand. That one's good. So this one, same deal. This one didn't go too well. Uh, here's the thing though, I'm a pretty forgiving guy. So if you can prove to me again that you can do it well, we'll, uh, we'll get you the credit you deserve. Uh, on this one though, a depth issue, so make sure you're hitting the depths that we want. But most of the mistakes students make are either depth related or we're just not keeping it really tight to the fence. Uh, here's kind of an interesting one. If you can see right here, this is where they were making a cut uh, and then the router bit just dropped down. That happens when we don't tighten up the router bit enough. And then at the very end here, they just got way off of their line. They didn't stay tight to their fence. Another one where they just didn't tighten their router bit up. Um, this student didn't even do the middle part. Uh, and then, you know, some of these aren't too bad. This one, uh, just no real depth checking it out. So uh, you're going to get two points per uh, router that you do correct. So... Um, make sure your depth is good, make sure your measurements are good, and make sure you do some practice cuts.